you for taking a look inside Kansas politics. Welcome in. I'm Denisha Richard. Well, today we have a very special guest with us. Joining us today is Governor Laura Kelly. Governor Kelly, thank you for joining us for this interview today. I'm delighted to be here, Denisha. Thank you for the invitation. Whew, so campaign season is almost over and it has been a whirlwind. You have been everywhere. You've been knocking on doors. You've been at parades, and now the time is winding down. How does it feel to get so closer to the finish line? Well, this is the sixth time I've been here, uh, and it's the same every time. Uh, you know, you're, you're excited, uh, but you know you've got a lot of work to do, mm -hmm. uh, and <laughs> you just keep doing it. You just got to keep uh, doing it, right? running right across the finish line on November 8th. Yeah, so... I want to show you something really quickly, and maybe we can reflect on it a little bit. Take a look here. Take a look at this, what's about to come up here. I want to show you and ask you about that day. Do you remember that day? It was freezing cold, yes. <laughs> I remember that day it very well. It was cold. I actually remember seeing you being wrapped up in a blanket. Yeah, right. One of the tribes gave me a blanket. Yes, yes. Very right. cold day. Tell me about who you were on that day. And looking at that photo, tell me if you're the same person sitting in front of me today. Yeah, I've been the same person for a long time, and I'm, I'm very much uh, the person who you see in that picture. You know, uh, a woman who uh, you know, moved to the state of Kansas uh, by choice, uh, and because of its great schools uh, and the job opportunities that both my husband and I had here, uh, and has loved living here uh, for the 36, 37 years that we've been here. I've raised both of my kids here. They got a world-class education in our public school system. Uh, and I, you know, I spent 14 years in the state Senate. Uh, came time for the governor's race and I was asked uh, if I would run. And I really didn't want to. I had no intention <laughs> of, of being governor. Uh, and here you are today. Yeah, that's exactly right. I just, but you know, we think back to 2018, you know, the state was really in a world of hurt. Uh, and I felt with my 14 years experience in the state Senate, particularly my time on the budget committee, the relationships that I had developed with the legislators, that I could get into office on day one and really start to put Kansas back together again. And that's what we've done. Now, let's talk a little bit about your approach to your term and to your campaign. Governor, you are taking somewhat of a moderate approach, a middle ground, middle of the road. Mm -hmm. That's what you've been saying from the beginning, from the time when you ran for governor the first time. And many say that that is initially the reason why you were able to gain the governor's seat, because mm -hmm. you were able to appeal to both the Republicans and both the Democrats. Do you think that middle ground approach is going to be in your favor this time around? It's worked for me for 18 years, uh, and I believe that, uh, and it's not even a strategy, it's just who I am, you know. Um, I was a math major, actually, when I went into college, and so the day I walked onto the Senate floor in 2005, and there were eight Democrats, and there were 32 Republicans, I thought, I need to go across the aisle and make some friends if I want to get anything done. So that's just been my style and my approach. Uh, and some of my dearest colleagues uh, were the Republicans uh, who I worked very closely with uh, to get lots and lots of good things done for Kansas when I was in the Senate. And that, and that same uh, method has worked uh, you know, as governor. If you remember back to 2018 and, and now again in 2022, I'm actually endorsed by some very uh, recognizable moderate Republicans uh, because, uh, you know, we were both in it for the same thing, to do the best thing we could for the people of the state of Kansas. So and you are today as well. I am. I, you know, I've got uh, former Governor Graves, uh, former Governor Hayden, former Senator Kassebaum, former Senator Fromm, uh, two former attorneys general, uh, Bob Steffen and Carla Stovall. And hundreds of other former Republican elected officials. Well, speaking of your Republican colleagues, of course, we have to bring up your Republican opponent, Derek Schmidt. Who was my Republican colleague. And yes, he was. And he has mentioned on your middle ground approach and you appealing to both parties. He says that's not real. He called it a facade in a recent Fox News interview. He said that it wasn't real. And he called you not only a Democrat, but he called you a Biden Democrat. What do you have to say about that? Well, I don't think you can call somebody not middle of the road when she has signed nearly 300 bipartisan bills as governor. 
uh, end when she has the support of so many moderate Republicans. I mean, it's clear that uh, I am who I say I am, uh, and I think the people of Kansas know that. Um, you know, I, I don't deal with the extremes. I work to bring people together uh, around the table, develop consensus, collaboration, uh, and, and come to common ground. Uh, that's the way I've always worked, and it's the way I'll work in my next term. So, Governor, one of the largest platforms in your campaign and in your term is the economy, the Kansas economy. You have really given your administration accolades for improving the economy, but as we just talked about your Republican counterparts, many of them are saying that you are not being truthful with the Kansan people about where the economy truly stands. They're basically saying that you're a liar. They're saying you're not being transparent. Are you truly being transparent with the Kansan people? Well, let me, let me say, first of all, that I recognize that Kansas families are suffering uh, from the inflation uh, that's occurring all over the world right now. And that's why I wanted to eliminate the sales tax on food. That was one thing I thought we could do to really make a difference uh, for people. Uh, it's also why I tried to get a $250 tax rebate uh, to every Kansan. That would be 500 in a married household. Um, and again, recognizing that inflation is real uh, and that it has real impact on Kansas families. Uh, but in terms of lying about it, I don't think you can bring in $14.5 billion of new capital investment, uh, creating or retaining 52,000 jobs, be recognized by you know, the prestigious uh, e economic development magazines and groups uh, with the Gold Shovel Award two years in a row. And then last year, uh, I got the Governor's Cup uh, as the state with the most new capital investment per capita. Kansas is number one in the country right now. and we have record low unemployment. So, uh, you know, it's real. It's very real what we're talking about in terms of the overall Kansas economy. We, we, keep, uh, we keep bringing new, big, Panasonic, mm -hmm. uh, $4 billion project, 4,000 jobs. Uh, you know, the numbers speak for themselves. And you know, I remember during your debate, you said it loud and clear, recognize, that's what you said about the Kansas economy. But Kansans are recognizing a lot of things. For instance, uh, the Cato Institute in their recent governor's report, their report card, they rated you a C. And um, also there was a former budget director on your team, Campbell, he has endorsed your opponent. So Kansans are, recognizing, but they're recognizing things that may allude to you not being as truthful about the economy. Well, Kansans can trust that I am being truthful about the economy. Uh, you know, I, again, I will say, I understand individual households, there, there are some issues, inflation's clearly an issue, uh, but no, we are not, uh, we're not faking it on the economy, it is real. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, you, you can counter all of what you just said with those entities, you know, that CNBC, for instance, recognized us in 2019 as the comeback state of the year because we were really moving the economy forward. Uh, you know, Area Development Magazine, again, two years in a row, the gold shovel, which is the highest level of honor that they can give to a state for economic development. And the Governor's Cup uh, doesn't come easy. That, that's a lot of work. And for Kansas to be number one in the country uh, suggests that I'm telling the truth. All right, coming up, we already know her stance, but we ask Governor Kelly if she believes she has done enough for abortion rights. Her answer is straight ahead on Inside Kansas Politics. We'll be right back. Crown Toyota has been a part of your community for more than 27 years. To us, you are customers for a lifetime. Whether it's simply keeping your vehicle serviced or getting you back in the driver's seat when life happens. Crown Toyota, experience the crown difference. Best of Lawrence 2022, best place to buy a new car. Get into a 2022 Toyota Highlander or an all new Tundra for 3.49% APR for up to 60 months. Crown Toyota, 3400 South Iowa, Lawrence, Kansas. 
Huge savings going on now during Vanderbilt's fall clearance event. Burn outerwear sale. All men's and ladies' insulated coats and bibs, $10 off. Save up to $40 on waterproof Carolina pull-on work boots. Soft or safety toe, your choice, $134.99. Save $20 on durable Ariat Sierra work boots. Our price, $159.99. New fall styles arriving weekly of Hey Dude shoes for men and ladies. Your work boots and a Vanderbilt. It seems that everyone is pretty important to the health of everyone else these days. We try to separate, but life has a way of catching up to us. And pretty soon, we're in the swim again. It would help if everyone had access to health care. That's why there's a Grace Med to be a medical home for everyone. A place where you can get just about every kind of health care that everyone needs, regardless of your ability to pay. Because everyone deserves the kind of hope that only good health can bring. Grace Med. Hope care for everyone. Car accident? Devon James wins. Nights, weekends, anytime. Serious accidents can happen anywhere, anytime. At Devon James, we make it easy to get the help you need when and where you need it. You can reach us by phone or online anytime, 24-7. If it's the weekend, don't wait until Monday. Call or text right now. And if you can't come to us, we'll come to you. Devon James wins. Call or text 888-8888. Welcome back to Inside Kansas Politics. We continue our conversation with Governor Laura Kelly today. Well, let's talk about uh, the abortion amendment. That was an astounding victory for many Kansans here in the state. Media outlets have described you in terms of the abortion amendment, tight-lipped, sidestepping, mum. And some Kansans may argue that you're not doing enough to advocate for abortion rights. Now, you've said it loud and clear. You've said it that you want Kansas to have access to safe abortions. You have said that. But some Kansans say that's not enough. Do you think you're doing enough? I think Kansans have always wanted me to really focus on the issues that impact their lives on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's why I have focused like a laser on fully funding our schools, making sure that our roads and bridges are built, uh, making sure that we get broadband access all across uh, the state, making sure that our foster care system is taking care of those kids and getting them back into their biological homes or into adoptive homes. You know, I think that's what Kansans want me to fixate on. In terms of the, of the other issues, you know, my, my position on women's reproductive care is solid. Been the same for the 18 years I've been in elected office. I believe that those decisions should be made between a woman and her doctor and her family. And I believe that a woman has a right to bodily autonomy, just like a man does. And so many Kansas women, they went out to the polls to vote just for that amendment. Exactly. Record turnout. Do you think that your approach to abortion is possibly alienating those voters who could check your name at the polls? Oh, no, I don't think so. I, I think uh, Kansas voters are, are very aware of my position on that uh, and you know I stand with the majority of Kansans I mean it was six, nearly 60 percent of Kansans came out and said no on that amendment um, I stand with them I think they know that all right we will be right back and we'll talk more with Governor Laura Kelly when we return Chevy Silverado it's got the power you want and the capability you need to do the job so you can get to the important work. Find new moments, find new roads. Get 1,500 total cash allowance on all 2022 Silverado pickups with a 2.7 liter turbo engine. Plus now during truck season, get a $1,000 accessory allowance toward a new Chevy truck with accessories. See your Heart of America Chevy dealer today. Presenting Veterans Voices, honoring those who serve. Major Chris Mulholland served 20 years in the Marines and at age 62 was diagnosed with ALS. Despite his limitations, he has become active in the VFW Paralyzed Veterans Association and ALS Society to increase awareness among veterans. Veterans Voices, sponsored by Arbor Court Retirement Community at Topeka, saluting all area veterans. What happens here matters here. 
That's why the 27 News Capitol Bureau brings the important stories home to you like no one else can. Let's go live to the State House. Here's Capitol Bureau reporter Denisha Richard. It's been a long road, but the governor has finally signed the bill into law today. Because decisions made here impact you, your family, and your home. We have your Capitol News covered. Right now, there's a big political divide on this issue. The 27 News Capitol Bureau, working for you. The Jennifer Hudson Show is here. I gotta talk to you now. I left work to come. You left work? They gonna see you. He's with me today. We're lighting up daytime, baby. And you gonna bless people every single day. We're giving back, lifting each other up. Something hits you in your heart. We're doing it all. Yeah! Mama Hood, coming to the rescue. Weekdays at 1 on 27 KSNT. Welcome back to Inside Kansas Politics. Our conversation continues with Governor Laura Kelly here today. Governor Kelly, I want to ask you about the COVID-19 pandemic. You were a leader for Kansans in such an unprecedented time in not only the state, the country, and the whole wide world. I really want to ask you what it was like to be <laughs> a leader during that time. I'm sure it was very complicated. Well, it... it um you know, it was just one more thing to do in some ways, you know. I, I, um, the first thing that I did when I heard of the pandemic coming into the United States, or even before, uh, was I went back and read the book, The Great Influenza, that talked about the pandemic of 1918. Uh, and I wanted to see what happened during that time. How did people react? How did elected officials react? You know, what, what did they do to keep people safe? So I, I sort of used that uh, as a uh, guidebook for uh, how I might approach this. And I knew that it was important to listen to our scientists. Uh, I knew it was important to get all of the personal protective equipment that we possibly could as soon as testing was available to get that into our state, to do absolutely everything that we could to keep Kansans safe. And, and that's how we approached it, you know, it was, and it was an all of the above uh, approach. I, I had an incredible team. I, you know, fortunately, you know, when I became governor, I was able to attract some of the top notch uh, cabinet secretaries in the country all of whom are experts in their own particular area, which came in very handy when a pandemic hit. And everybody had to pitch in and pitch in, you know, 24-7, 365 uh, to deal with it. Uh, but they had the expertise and the motivation uh, to, to do that kind of thing, so. And I wanna quickly get into your ad that was just released a few days ago. It targeted black Kansans, and it's actually a first of its kind. You made history as a governor appealing to that demographic during an ad. Some Kansans may think that it is disingenuous because it's a few weeks before the election. And so what some Kansans may also want to know is what outreach you've been doing to reach African Americans in Kansas, as well as other people of color. I know there are a few debates that you were invited to that you had to decline. The NAACP debate in Johnson County was one of those, and you were under fire for that. Were you able to reach out to them and make amends? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, my administration from day one uh, has taken the issue of racial equity and then justice uh, very, very seriously. And, you know, we, we really uh, energized and empowered our uh, Can Kansas African American Affairs Commission and our Hispanic and Latino Commission. Uh, and through them, have really reached out over and over. And it wasn't just during the pandemic, though during the pandemic we did do extra outreach because uh, the, the COVID was hitting our communities of color in ways uh, more apparent than in some other communities. But even before that, we were already uh, working with our communities of color on, on issues of particular concern to them, housing, childcare, education, health care. We, we were infiltrating the communities, working with local leaders uh, to make sure that we were uh, moving as many resources and um, programs as we could uh, to be able to respond to some of the specific needs in our communities of color. And one last question. I really want Kansans to know who you are. Take the governor's hat off, take it off, and tell Kansans who 
Governor, well, who Laura Jean Kelly is. Not the governor, just Laura Jean Kelly. Who is she? Oh, I'm the daughter of a career Army officer, the granddaughter of a New York City police officer, uh, and many uncles who were New York City firefighters. Uh, you know, I've lived all over the world, uh, you know, being a military brat. I live from coast to coast in the United States. I lived in Germany. I lived in Japan. Um, and I made a conscious decision as a young adult to move to the Midwest um, because I had lived everywhere and realized that this is where I felt most at home. Uh, and so the opportunity came to move to Kansas, uh, and I did. Uh, and I've lived happily ever after. I had a great job when I first got here uh, as executive director for the Kansas Recreation and Park Association. It allowed me to travel all across the state of Kansas in every little town that had a recreation commission and really get to know Kansas uh, and Kansans uh, and validated uh, my move here. Uh, it, it really, it is who I am uh, and I would be honored uh, to be able to continue to serve Kansans. All right, thank you so much for joining us. And we reached out to Governor Kelly's Republican opponent, Attorney General Derek Schmidt. And of course, we're waiting to hear back, but as soon as he allows us, we will sit down with him as well. That's if he accepts. Okay, coming up, stop just checking the boxes while you are at the polls. Straight ahead, we tell you why you should know every candidate on your ballot before you go to vote. We'll be right back. The experts at Renewal by Anderson work closely with you to help you choose the right style, color, and finishes just for your home. Renewal by Anderson's signature service is committed to giving you the best customer experience possible. It truly is hassle-free. First, a highly trained and friendly design consultant will visit your home. After that, our technicians will measure and manufacture your Fibrex windows. Step three is where the magic happens. The installation and finishing takes place. And finally, Renewal by Anderson offers ongoing customer care for any of your concerns. And our team can work with you to fit your replacement window budget. For a limited time only, Renewal by Anderson is offering $350 off each window, $500 off patio doors, plus free installation or 2.99% financing. Visit rbabestoffer.com to take advantage of this exclusive offer. We all learned something very important during the pandemic. We learned just how connected we are, that we need each other, that we are strongest when we work together, live together, hope together. And we learned that we need each other to be healthy. Vaccines, including the COVID vaccine, are an essential way to ensure that we all stay healthy for our own good and for the good of our families and communities. Call 785-861-8800 today for your vaccination appointment with Grace Med, the home of hope care for everyone. Topeka, come enjoy our downtown. Live, work, play. Special thanks to our downtown activation sponsors. Welcome back to Inside Kansas Politics. Hey, you. Yes, you. Okay, raise your hand if you've ever went out to vote. You get your ballot and you have no idea who you're voting for. All you do is just check their name. Mm-hmm. Yep, I'm talking to you, but guess what? Not this election. We are going to help you know your vote before you head to the polls. Joining me today is Jacqueline Lightcap with League of Women Voters of Kansas. Jacqueline, thank you for joining me today. Oh, you're welcome. Glad to be here. Yeah, well, this is something that a lot of voters do. Many of us are guilty of this, going to the polls, mm -hmm. just checking a name, thinking that it's okay. But you say this is dangerous territory. Yeah, we want every voter to know exactly what's on their ballot before they walk in so that they're not surprised by anything. Okay, first things first, what we need to do before we head to the polls, 
We have to know what we want. Yes, we want to know exactly what is important to us, what issues are important to us, what leadership traits are important to us, because that will help us find the candidate that fits in with those two areas. And so when we think about it, sometimes we get those little mailings in the mm -hmm. mail, the little postcards, yeah. and what's the first thing we do, right? Toss it to the side. Yep. Some of us may even throw it in the trash. Who knows what you do with <laughs> it, but we've got to actually read those. They can have valuable information. Yes, those are put out by candidates and by committees supporting the candidates. We all want to hold on to them and compare them, do our research, use them as a starting point, not the finishing point, but it's a good place to start. And of course, you also want to make sure you observe, observe, and observe some more, right? Yes. Read everything that you can find about that candidate online. Watch debates or forums that they're participating in. If there's uh, another informational session just about elections in general, your area League of Women Voters often has those. You can attend and you can learn all kinds of things about the candidate and the issues that are on your ballot. And also you need to pay attention to what voters themselves are saying about the candidate, right? Yes. Look and see who might be endorsing the candidate. Mm -hmm. What are other people saying? What are your friends, family, and neighbors saying? That's really important. You can also find out what a candidate is, who, what kind of funding a candidate is receiving, so what organizations are supporting them. That will tell you a lot about the values and the, the priorities that that candidate might have. And it can be so hard, you know, to follow all of the candidates that might be on your ballot, but it just takes a few minutes, right? Oh, yeah. Very simple so that you can go to the polls with knowledge. Yes. We recommend a trusted website like vote411.org. That is a site where you just type in your address and it will tell you everything that is on your ballot. There's some other great resources. ksballot.org is another one that you can do the same thing. Type your ballot. They give you little different types of information, but that's what you need to do is a gather and observe from a variety of sources. Perfect information as we head out to the polls. And you know, when you think about it, we already know. It seems like it's very close with the election just weeks away. And actually, advanced voting is going on right now. But no fear, as Jacqueline said, there are resources to help you. So before you go out to the polls, make sure you know who you're voting for. Just don't check a box. Research, observe, and you'll go to the polls with a lot of knowledge. All right, that was your look inside Kansas politics. We'll be right here next week, same time, same place. We'll see you next Sunday. That way.